To understand the mind of the Muhammadan suicide bomber, one has to study the Quran and Ahadith that are actually the sources of this satanic method of terror. Unfortunately, because of time constraints, I can recite only a few examples from among the hundreds that fill the Quran and Hadith. Chess. Sahih Muslim Hadith 5612 narrated by Buraida ibn al-Hasib. Allah the Apostle said, He who played chess is like one who dyed his hand with the flesh and blood of swine, singing and musical instruments. Ahmad al-Bukhari and Muslim record that Aisha said, Abu Bakr entered upon us on the day of Eid and there were some slave girls who were singing. Abu Bakr shouted, Slaves of Allah, you play the pipes of the Satan. He said it three times. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 7.494b Narrated by Abu Amir that he heard the Prophet saying, From among my followers there will be some people who will consider illegal sexual intercourse, the wearing of silk, the drinking of alcoholic drinks, and the use of musical instruments as lawful. And Allah will transform the rest of them into monkeys and pigs, and they will remain so till the day of resurrection. Bells. Sahih Muslim Hadith 5279 narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah Messenger said, The bell is the musical instrument of the Satan. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 4.438 narrated by Aisha. Al-Harith bin Hisham asked the Prophet, How does the divine inspiration come to you? He replied, In all these ways, the angel sometimes comes to me with a voice which resembles the sound of a ringing bell. And when this state abandons me, I remember what the angel has said, and this type of divine inspiration is the hardest one on me. And the angel sometimes comes to me in the shape of a man and talks to me, and I understand and remember what he says. If bells are the musical instruments of Satan, and Muhammad asserts that he receives his revelations and inspirations by a voice resembling the ringing of bells, then it must have been Satan and not Gabriel who was revealing to him the verses of the Qur'an. This can explain very clearly all the anomalies, inconsistencies, and abnormalities of the Qur'an vis-à-vis -vis the biblical originals. Wine and intoxicants, Al-Baqarah 2.219. They ask thee concerning wine, khamar, and gambling, maister. Say, in them is great sin and some benefit for men. But the sin is greater than the benefit. Al-Ma'idah 5.90 O ye who believe, intoxicants and gamblings are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Eschew such abomination that you may prosper. Sahih Bukhari 7.481 narrated by Ibn Umar. Allah's Apostle said, Whoever drinks alcoholic drinks, khamur, in this world and does not repent before dying will be deprived of it in the hereafter. Muhammad makes it very clear that the subject of wine, khamr, that he is referring to is the same on earth as it is in the hereafter. Hence, it has to be the exact same intoxicating wine, especially since he did not specify that it is not. Gambling, Al-Ma'ida 5.90 O ye who believe, intoxicants and gamblings are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Sunan Abu Dawood 2.573 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, if one enters a horse with two others, when he is not certain that it cannot be beaten, it is not gambling. But when one enters a horse with two others, when he is certain it cannot be beaten, it is gambling. Gold, Al-Hajj 22.23 Allah will admit those who believe and work righteous deeds to gardens beneath which rivers flow. They shall be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and pearls, and their garments there will be of silk. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 7.728 narrated by Hudayfa. The Prophet forbade us to drink out of gold and silver vessels or eat in it, and also forbade us the wearing of silk or sitting on it. Sahih Muslim hadith 5176 narrated by Ali ibn Abu Talib. Allah Messenger forbade wearing of silk and yellow clothes and the gold ring. Sunan Abu Dawud 4224 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, If anyone wants to put a ring of fire on one he loves, let him put a gold ring on him. If anyone wants to put a necklace of fire on the one he loves, let him put a gold necklace on him. And if anyone wants to put a bracelet of fire on the one he loves, let him put a gold bracelet on him. Keep to silver and amuse yourselves with it. Silk, 
Al-Kahf 18.31. For them will be gardens of eternity. Beneath them rivers will flow. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and they will wear grain garments of fine silk and heavy brocade. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 7.722 narrated by Ibn Abi Layla. Allah's apostle said, gold, silver, silk, and the badge, a kind of silk, are for them, unbelievers in this world, and for you Muslims in the hereafter. Al-Tirmidhi hadith 4404 narrated by Uqba bin Amir. Allah's messenger used to restrain people who adorned themselves and wore silk, saying, if you want the adornment and silk of paradise, do not wear them in this world. Poetry and Poets Al-Anbiya 21.5 Nay, they say, medleys of dreams. Nay, he is but a poet. Let him then bring us a sign like the ones that were sent to prophets of old. Al-Safat 37.36 And say, what? Shall we give up our gods for the sake of a poet possessed? Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 8.176 narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's apostle said, it is better for any one of you that the inside of his body be filled with pus, which may consume his body, than it be filled with poetry. Pictures and Paintings Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 7.834 narrated by Muslim. I heard Abdullah saying that he heard the Prophet saying, the people who will receive the severest punishment from Allah will be the picture makers. Sunan of Abu Dawud hadith 227 narrated by Ali bin Abu Talib. The Prophet said, Angels do not enter the house where there is a picture or a dog or a person who is sexually defiled. The listener should not by now be surprised at all for such behavior having heard all the above prohibitions. Muhammad mandated these onerous and unwarranted prohibitions only while his followers are alive. All these prohibitions are not only lifted when they are dead, but his dead followers are promised even greater rewards than these that they could ever attain in life on this miserable earth. If one abides by all these prohibitions, the only purpose for the existence of the followers of Muhammad would be abject groveling to Allah and warmongering all of one's life. Can the reader imagine his or her own life conducted without singing or songs, poetry or poems, musical instruments, no symphonies, no orchestras, no operas? No dancing, no painting or pictures, hence no television, no cameras, no videos, no sculpture, hence no museums, wine and other intoxicants forbidden, gold and golden jewelry to adorn oneself prohibited, no more silk garments or gambling. Muhammadan Islam is bereft of any joy, no fun, no pleasures except for unrelenting praying and dying for the cause of Allah. The suicide bombings, the hate-mongering displays, the depraved indifference to human life, the warmongering characteristics, the interminable visual displays of Muhammadans holding their holy book, the Qur'an, in one hand, and bombs, guns, and daggers in the other are all symptoms of a disease propagated by a virulent virus called the Qur'an.